genocide, the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national, racial, political, or cultural group. This is the story of Emma Darling Cushman, a light in the darkness for tens of thousands of orphans during the Armenian Genocide. It's still very emotional for us. Miss Cushman saved thousands and thousands of orphans. Emma was born and raised in Burlington, New York. She was born July 20th, 1863, during the Civil War, at a time when few girls went to school. Emma not only graduated from public school, she decided to further her education and enrolled in college. While in college, she decided to become a nurse, attending Patterson College in Patterson, New Jersey. She graduated in 1892 and went to work at Skerritt Hospital in Kansas City to train other nurses. In 1900, Emma Cushman joined the American Board of Commissioners of Foreign Missions and went to Asia Minor as a missionary. She arrived later that year in Konya, Central Turkey, eager to help. She partnered with Dr. William Dodd and Dr. Wilfred Post. Together, they operated the American Hospital in Konya, serving the local population. This training and experience would serve her well in the chaotic years to come. In 1914, the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. His assassination sparked the beginning of World War I. This world war would spread to the Ottoman Empire on October 28, 1914, when the Ottomans joined World War I on the side of the Central Powers. With their entrance into the war, the Ottomans ordered all foreigners to leave. Dr. Dodd and Dr. Post obeyed the order. Emma refused. Emma continued to run her hospital as one of the few Westerners remaining in Turkey. As she is known, belovedly, to all of uh, those who know her, was sort of an overpowering individual. She was both big in body and in spirit. Emma became a consul and was the only Allied representative in Turkey. She was granted the title of Acting Consul of the Allies and Neutral Nations. As consul, Emma was responsible for millions of dollars in relief funds and prisoner exchanges. The war continued on and tensions between the Turkish government and Armenian nationals grew. The Armenians had been traditional allies of Russia dating back to the 18th century. The Armenian soldiers in the Turkish military were discharged and sent home in January of 1915. With Russia and the world distracted by war, the Turks seized the opportunity to finally enact their revenge on their perceived enemy, the Armenians. The Turks marched Armenian citizens out to the desert to be killed by starvation or extreme heat. Those citizens that fought the army were hung, shot, or massacred in battles with the army. Many Armenians were deported using the Berlin-Baghdad Railway to labor in annihilation camps in the Syrian desert. This mass killing later became known as the Armenian Genocide. Uh, genocide is a new word combining the Greek word genos, uh, genos meaning race or group, with the root of the Latin sedere meaning to kill. These catastrophes led many people, especially children, to become homeless or orphaned. Emma saw these orphans on the streets and knew she had to help. She swooped these orphans up into her loving arms and off the streets. Every day, she would rescue more and more Armenian orphans from certain death. She hid them in safe homes, basements, or any other safe place. Emma found safe homes for these children until she couldn't find any more. At this point, Emma began to convert her hospital into an orphanage. The orphanage began small with 600 children, but would continue to grow until it expanded to hold over a thousand children. They were born in Marzavan, and in the middle of the night, like most Armenian stories, her father was called out. Um, in his pajamas, didn't even have time to change, and he never returned. So they had heard that um, the men were taken and rounded up, and they were killed in the middle of the night. My great-grandmother at the time was alive, and she knew that the Turks were going to soon come back and round up the women and the children and kill them as well. So what my great-grandmother did was she put my grandmother, whose name is, was Karzui, and her older brother, Norai, in an orphanage, in an American orphanage. Konya was the center of Turkish activity for Armenian deportations and the clearinghouse for Allied prisoners and interned civilians. And Emma took in and cared for many of them. These actions put her in harm's way according to the trained nurse in hospital review. Twice she was dragged from her bed at 2 o'clock in the morning by gendarmes and carried to the police station, from which few returned. Messages from the governor saved her just in time on both occasions. 
Emma was respected by provincial officials, but hated and vilified by local police and officials. Despite their intimidation and threats, Emma continued to do what she knew was right and saved as many lives as she could. The war raged on for three more years, and so did Emma's work, which included managing a hospital, negotiating with government officials, and operating an orphanage for thousands of children. Emma continued to manage and distribute millions of dollars of funds for the Allies, in partnership with the Near East Relief, which was the first large-scale humanitarian effort to aid the victims of the Armenian Genocide. With the war coming to a close and the Allies victorious, Emma's work did not end. It expanded. As the war ended, the League of Nations was established. This organization was formed, in part, to enforce the Treaty of Versailles signed by the Ottomans. Emma worked with both the Near East Relief and the League of Nations to reclaim Armenian orphans from Turkish homes. Cultural genocide is also part of genocide because they not only killed people, but they, but they destroyed thousands and thousands of Armenian churches and they destroyed the intellectuals. If you would ask me who I am, I couldn't tell you because I don't know what's my real name. I don't know when I was born. I don't know who my parents they were. One story of reclaimed Armenian orphans recalls of Emma receiving two freight car loads of children who all believed that they were Turkish. The children had been taken from their Armenian families and sent to live with Turkish families during the war. When they arrived in Konya, two Turkish women tried to convince the children that they were being kidnapped by Christians who would kill them. Emma remained calm and quietly took control of the situation by appointing trusted Armenian women to care for them during the transition. A few days later, the children were brought into the Armenian families where they learned to accept their real heritage and culture. This is only one example of Emma's strength of character in the face of adversity. The numbers of reclaimed Armenian children by Emma and others are staggering, with more than 60,000 children being rescued. With the rise of the Turkish nationalist movement, even Emma wasn't safe. And in 1923, Emma and more than 2,000 Armenian orphans moved to Corinth, Greece, continuing the work she began years earlier in Konya. In November 1925, the Near East Relief awarded Emma the Distinguished Service Medal for her bravery during the war. She also received the Gold Cross of the Legion of Honor Medal from the French government, and in 1926, the Greek government bestowed upon her their highest civilian decoration, the Golden Cross of the Savior, in recognition of her leadership and training of women in the Near East. In 1930, Miss Cushman visited Cairo, Egypt to reunite with some of the boys and girls she had cared for previously in her orphanages. Unfortunately, she became ill with blackwater fever and passed away on December 31, 1930. Emma Darling Cushman was a light in the darkness for the Armenian people during and after this horrific genocide. She was a witness to unimaginable acts of persecution. Emma stayed and persevered when others fled. She protected the Armenian people and advocated for them when they could not defend or speak for themselves. She made her voice heard when others would not listen. She was a pillar of strength during a time of injustice and tragedy, yet her courageous acts of humanitarianism are widely unrecognized today. After her death, Miss Emma Cushman was buried in Cairo, Egypt. Unfortunately, her story was buried with her. Today, this American hero lies in an unmarked grave, her story of heroism untold, her songs of bravery unsung, until now. Because of this project, our group was given the honor by the Committee to Restore the American Cemetery in Cairo, Egypt, of writing the inscription for her headstone, recognizing this unsung hero, Emma Darling Cushman, A Light in the Darkness. So as I say, she um, is uh, an unsung hero, but remembered fondly and dearly by all those who, uh, whom, with whom she came in contact. So if there was a flicker of hope in a very traumatic life, it was Miss Cushman. And God bless her and her family and her spirit to care for thousands and thousands of orphans. I would not be here today if not for the love and care of Miss Cushman um, loving those orphans.